I know I mentioned this in my Thor video from a few days ago, but I want to once again thank Atlas West for sending me an advance code of Shin Megami Tensei 5 so I could make this content for all of you. It was super cool of them, and I really appreciate it. Marvelous what's up, friends and loved ones! So, like many of you, I've been playing a lot of Shin Megami Tensei 5 lately, and I knew I would have to do a video on it. Now, rather than doing a full review, or a challenge run, or some comparison to Persona 5 that will get those clicks, but leave me feeling hollow and unsatisfied, I decided to stick to my passion and strengths, which are, of course, demons. Shin Megami Tensei 5 had a lot of new demons in it, and today I've decided I'm going to go through and rank them all based on whatever subjective criteria I decide makes the most sense while I'm recording this. Also, I know the title of this video says I'm going to be ranking all the new demons, but that's not entirely true. I am going to be leaving out some whose very existence I consider rather spoilery, and I wanted to keep this video mostly spoiler-free since the game came out less than a week ago. I would also like to once again invoke the I'm a great big dummy dum dum clause, which protects me from any and all criticisms when I inevitably mispronounce anyone's name. Alrighty, so with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so this first one I'm doing mostly as a formality. Jack Frost. He's not a new demon, but this game did bring us the doy-designed Frost, and it's still Jack Frost. I do like the little stripe on his hat and the slightly changed accent on his boots, but I'm not really a big fan of the white on his collar. But come on, it's Jack Frost. He was an S-rank demon then, and he's an S-rank demon now. Still a classic and iconic demon who stands strong as the mascot for the entire company. Next up is Angel, and let's address the elephant in the room here. Yes, I love Kaneko's Bondage Babe, but I promise to rank this one on its own merits and not compared to any previous design. Honestly, I think it really works. I like the kind of brass mask thing that makes it feel vaguely human, but it's got that unsettling vibe that I think is closer to what angels are supposed to be in the Bibble. It's very clearly an angel, and I like that it's kind of androgynous too. Like, I always thought it was a girl, but then you hear it talk in the game, and it's got this much more masculine voice that... Okay, I'm not good at recognizing voice actors, but I thought it might have been Yuri Lowenthal. Oh, Heavenly Father, deliver them light! If it's not him, sorry to whoever the voice was, uh, but, but yeah, Angel works, and if anything, I wish Doi had also given us new designs of the other rankings of Angels, because you see a lot of these Angels alongside Archangel and Power, and it would have been cool to see all of them get the redesign treatment. Um, I'm gonna give Angel B tier. Then there's Demon. Daemon? I, I think it's supposed to just be pronounced like Demon, but that A always throws me off, so I always say it like Demon. Uh, this thing is great. Like, similar to how we have Angel as this singular form in Mega Ten that represents this overarching category, it's kind of cool to see just this good representation of what a lot of people would think of when they think of Demon. Like, you could see this thing popping up on Nahobino's shoulders and offering him bad advice. It's a little simple, but simplicity really works for this type of Demon. A tier. Okay, so these next three all feel a bit similar to me, and I'll explain why, but let's just start with Amanazako. So, she's cute enough, it is a really nice design, um, it feels to me like Doi just wanted his own version of, like, Pixie, but it works, it works great as a design. She's got, like, the kimono and the little snaggletooth, it's a cute Japanese take on a Pixie-esque demon. That said, Amanazako is supposed to be this, like, super old Tengu woman, so I don't think it's the most fitting from a mythological standpoint. It's still a cute design, but it does feel a little bit off to me. And also, I don't like having her as an overworld partner. I very quickly got sick of hearing, Hey! 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 Like she's freaking Navi from Ocarina of Time. Uh, Amanazako gets... You know what? Um, I'm gonna give her an A. A for Amanazako. Next up is Finn McCool. Okay, quick personal tangent. 
A video I've been wanting to do for years, and I just never did, was a list of 10 mythological figures I'd like to see in Megami Tensei. And while I never sat down and put the script together, from day one, I always had Finn McCool on that list. And I really wish I'd made that video so there was evidence of me totally calling his existence in this game. Uh, okay, moving on. Much like how Amanazako feels like Doi wanted his own pixie, Finn McCool feels similar to other Kaneko heroes like Kakulin or Siegfried. Uh, I think he did a fantastic job here. There's a lot of little touches I like. I, I like that he's got the salmon thumb from the story. It's a solid design, but I do have one complaint. Atlas West? You really should have made him Irish. I know not every single demon is gonna have an accurate accent, but Finn would have stood out so much more as a character if you'd actually given him that Irish brogue. B rank for Finn McCool would have been an A if he'd actually been Irish. Lastly, in our trilogy of demons that feel like Doi's attempt to recreate a classic trope of demons is Hayataro. And I feel bad criticizing him because he is a good boy doggo pupper, but he's also just not that memorable to me. Like, he's the main demon partner of one of the characters in this game, but I really just don't remember much about him. I think Doi wanted to make him his own take on Cerberus, but Hayataro just doesn't have that presence to him. It's, it's not a bad design by any means, but whenever I'm not looking directly at it, I genuinely struggle to remember what he looks like. Uh, C tier. Then there's Nua, who I guess I'll be ranking in both her human and demon form. I feel like this character was supposed to be super sexy, but her animations are so cartoonishly goofy, I can't take her seriously in that regard. Like, the way her hips move remind me of, like, Betty Boop, which, I, I don't know, maybe that was the point? I definitely like her snake self more. I, I'm always a big fan of when the demons feel monstrous in some way. And I think Doi could have gone a little harder on that aspect, but it works well enough, I suppose. I'm gonna give Human Nua a D, and Snake Nua a C. Abdiel is a very tough demon for me to rank, because like, on one hand, there actually is a lot of cool symbolism and nice touches throughout her design that are really nice, and Doi clearly put a lot of thought and effort into this one. And yet, despite all of that, I can't really say that I like Abdiel's design. I like her as a character, and I like her role in the story, but design-wise... I'd say I appreciate it more than I actually like it, so I'm gonna give her a C. Konsu is the leader of the Egyptian branch of Bethel, and he works really well as a creator deity associated with the moon. He's distinctly Egyptian, without just leaning on a standard pharaoh design, which works for him. However, since it's such a common part of his depictions in mythology, I do wish Doi had given him a little more of a mummy motif, maybe have his legs wrapped up or something. Overall, it's a nice design, and he stood out as a solid leader of his Bethel branch. B tier. Uh, next up is Hydra, and I kinda love this thing. I like how the heads are asymmetrical, and a small touch that I think really adds to the creepiness factor is those human teeth. Why does it have human teeth? Uh, I love how his color, patterns, and texture are reminiscent of, like, ancient pottery, which gives him this... sorry, but mythological vibe. I feel like Doi could have just made this thing feel really reminiscent of Yamata no Orochi or Ananta, but it stands out really strongly on its own. Genuinely one of my favorites. A tier. Alright, now we have Mananangal. I hate that this is sexy to me. Like, you know that bit from Community where Troy is like, I have the weirdest boner? That's Mononengul. But darn it all if I don't love seeing this demon. It's so cool that Doi started branching out to other factions of mythology and didn't just grab the biggest and most well-known creatures. Like, I I'll admit, I'd never heard of this figure until SMT5. But with everything I've read, I think Doi's design absolutely works here. I said before I like when the demons feel properly monstrous, and this one works so well for that. Uh, I don't think I will ever get the visions and sounds of her using Sanguine Drain out of my mind. A tier for Mananangul. 
I feel like Doi could have just called this demon Werewolf and left it at that. Yeah, I know technically Werewolf already existed in Megaten, but hey, so did Angel and Konsu, and we got those. However, Doi didn't. We got Lou Garou, who is basically a werewolf that runs around screaming, I'm French! And, oh man, do I love him. Earlier, I criticized Atlas West for not having Finn McCool be Irish, but I am so glad they really doubled down on this dude being French. He's memorable, he's cool, he's got that certain je ne sais quoi. Lou Garou gets an A. Uh, now, if you've noticed I've been a bit stingy with my S ranks, it's because I truly believe that S ranks should be reserved for what I consider the best of the best. Remember, this is a totally subjective list based on my own personal preferences. That said, Atvaris, S rank, without question. This little rooster kitty dragon is my favorite thing Doi has ever done, SMT5 or otherwise. It has this cute charm that's also a big part of the reason why I love Mothman so much. His sound effects are adorable. He's got a quest where he makes omelets. I love that, again, Doi went for more of an obscure background, this time drawing from Lithuanian folklore. I am just a huge fan of everything about Edvaris. Absolute S-rank, no doubt. Uh, and while I'm on the subject of Lithuanian mythology, I don't suppose one day we can get Rogushes, the Lithuanian god of pickles and beer, who would absolutely be my persona. Had to get at least one persona reference in this video, sorry. Our next demon is one that I strongly considered giving an S rank, because Kaya no Hime really grew on me a lot as I played. Grew on me. B because she's a grass goddess. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, but for real, this take on, on this goddess was very memorable and just charming. You can easily identify what this goddess is about from one glance, which I often consider a sign of a very good demon. A tier. Lamu is a demon where I'll admit up front, if this dude had been in Shin Megami Tensei IV Apocalypse or Strange Journey Redux, I probably wouldn't have liked him all that much. But actually seeing him in motion in Shin Megami Tensei 5 and getting to take in his animations and his voice acting and all that stuff, he's pretty darn cool and genuinely terrifying in a good way. However, he ended up kicking my butt so many times in my first playthrough that I was eventually tired of looking at him, so he's getting knocked down to a B. Alright, I, I feel like I gotta get this out of the way before I talk about this demon. Yes. Aidan is hot. I am not disputing that. I definitely like to get a taste of her apple fritter, if you know what I mean. And I don't blame you if you don't, because I'm not even sure if I do. But her design is just a little too busy for me. Okay, so you've got this Norse goddess associated with her golden apples that provide eternal youth. Got it. She has a picnic basket to carry them around, so you sprinkle in some Red Riding Hood aesthetics. Okay, sure. Makes it really funny to have her in a team with Lou Guru. But then somehow Doi got it in his head that she needs to be a pop star? And all her animations and much of her dialogue is based on her being an idol? It feels so unnecessary to me. And, and honestly, I think it sucks away some of her appeal to me. She could have been an A or possibly even an S rank for me. But there's just too much going on, so she's gonna get a B. And then there's Artemis, and boy am I glad she exists, because I was starting to get worried I wouldn't be able to use my F tier throughout this entire video. I loathe this Artemis design. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be a reference to Magical Girls or Saint Seiya or what have you, but knowing the inspiration behind the design doesn't mean I have to like the design. The moon-shaped tiara is a nice touch, but I think this is an insanely weak design from Doi who had been showing a lot of growth in his demons in this game. So yeah, F tier. Not helped in part by the fact that I had to pay money to see her. And because I don't want to end this video on a particularly negative note, let's also go ahead and rate the protofiend himself, Algami. Now, on paper, I really like the idea of this guy. He essentially seemed like a man-made deity who was specifically designed to merge with a human to become a Nahobino and do the stuff that SMT5 is about. Again, not trying to spoil. 
Like, the fact that Algami really wasn't a specific god or deity that actually exists is super cool, and he worked pretty well as a character, and his bond with the protagonist was genuinely awesome. Kind of like Dogda, only he was much less of a jerk. But when they revealed who he actually was, I'll admit I was a little underwhelmed. But still, he's a solid character that has an almost Gale from Digital Devil Saga-like quality, and I think he's worthy of an A for Algami. Alrighty, so like I said, I did exclude a few things on this list that I could have talked about out of consideration for people that haven't played it. But there's my ratings on 18 brand new or redesigned demons in Shin Megami Tensei 5. Doi has had some solid designs in the past, but this is where I feel his talents have really shined the brightest. And if he keeps bringing this level of commitment to his demons, I think the series is in good hands. Once again, super special thanks to Atlas West for providing me with a copy of the game, and to all of you out there playing the game right now, I really hope you're enjoying it. Today's comment question is a simple one. Who is your favorite new demon from Shin Megami Tensei 5? Do you agree or disagree with any of my rankings? Let me know what you think about Doi's demons in the comments below, and I will see you next time.